Hey, before today's episode, I want you to do me a favor by hitting that subscribe or follow button in front of you, um, depending on what platform you're currently list- using to listen to my podcast. I upload weekly, currently aiming to maybe put out two episodes per week, but until then, it is an... It is new episode every Sunday, 1 p.m. here in Vancouver or 8 p.m. GMT, if you even know what that means. So uh, make sure you're also following Gentleman Pursuits on every social media as well. If you don't, you're missing out on some really, really good content I put out every day. Once again, it's Gentleman Pursuits. Hey, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to my podcast, The Gentleman Pursuits. Um, thank you once again for tuning in this Sunday. How is everyone doing? I am just so grateful that this week is done. I'm so happy that I survived the previous week because it was so, 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 so tough for me. I couldn't stand it any second longer. But uh, while I was having a troublesome week on the other side of the world, in Europe, the only watch auction fair was happening at the same time. And today, um, I, want to, I want to spend this episode talking about this crazy auction fair. So for those who are not familiar with it, I'll only, um, only watch... The, uh, the name of the auction fair happens every two years and it is, it is a charity auction of unique timepieces created by the finest, the best of the best for research on a disease called Duchenne muscular dystrophy, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, Duchenne muscular dystrophy or DMD for short. This event gathers around um, 50 brands and is premier international watchmaking charity event. The 8th edition took place uh, on the 9th of November, which is yesterday, uh, in, in a Four Season Hotel in Geneva, under the hammer of Christie's. So the idea of only watch is that some of the finest watch brands donate a watch to be auctioned by the audience uh, with all the proceeds of the sale going to the aforementioned research to the DMD research. This is some, some of the few places on earth where you can acquire unique watches. That's why it's really popular among the wealthy, of course. There are a lot of watches for me to go over uh, from the collection. Um, you can actually go on to Watch Only's uh, website and check out the whole collection page. There's like a like a catalog on it. However, today I would love to focus on three watches that was the highlight of the of the whole event. Actually, two of them are the highlight of the event, and one of them I want to talk about is a watch that just caught my attention in general so first watch i want to talk about from the event is the fp jaune astronomic blue so heading into the watch uh watch only 2019 the fp jaune astronomic blue is one of the most talked about watches in the collection actually if you've seen if you know which watch i'm talking about you you understand right this watch is phenomenal looking the dial design is just 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 really on point so this is the second time that Jean has chosen to introduce a totally new complication in a unique in a unique piece for this charity um, auction with the last one being the uh, mono pusher split seconds chronograph in 2017 which sold for 1.5 one five million Swiss francs. The watch was estimated at around three hundred thousand to six hundred thousand. However, according to sources, when the astronomic blue, like during the auction, when the astro- when the astronomic blue was first introduced, right, someone yelled from the crowd, "One million Swiss francs!" Immediately. So the bidding process was fairly short. And the watch went under hammer at around 1.8 million Swiss francs. To be honest, if any brand in the event was to bring in 1.8 million for the charity, it's FP Jaune. 
right? A few years ago, F. B. Jones' Tourbillon Sovereign Blue brought in around five hundred and fifty thousand and one point one five million again, right? With the mono pusher split second I said a few moments ago. Also, I want to point out that it is absolutely impressive for an independent watchmaker such as F. P. Jean to bring in that great amount of money, right? Results like this usually are tied to big names like Patek or maybe Rolex. This is some impressive work by F. P. Jean. So speaking of Patek, um, this brings me to the second watch that I want to talk about from the event. The Patek Philippe Grandmaster Chime. I feel like you saw that coming as well because this created shock waves throughout the whole right within the whole watchmaking community. I really wish I was a part of this because the Grandmaster Chime just set the all-time record for for the most expensive watch in the world. It was sold for 31 million. When I saw the news about this, the only question, actually, the only word that popped into my mind was, how? Right? How? How? How in the world can a watch be that expensive? Thirty-one million. For those who may not know what a Grandmaster Chime is, it is a watch with two dials, basically two really, really beautiful, well-crafted dials. Now, it has always been Patek selling for the highest price. In 2017, the Patek Philippe um, 5208T was sold for 6.2 million, and in 2015, the unique, sta- the unique stainless steel 5016A went under hammer for 7.3 million. The list can go on and on and on with Patek Philippe, but you get the idea. So the most expensive watch record has been broken over and over again. But this one, this Patek Philippe watch right here, puts other records to shame. Until yesterday, the most expensive watch of all time was held by another Patek Philippe. Not surprised, it's the Henry Graves Jr. Super Complication, which was sold for 24 million in 2014. Okay, I know someone, some of you listening right now may say, but that's not a wristwatch. Right, that's a pocket watch, the super complication, right, super complicated, right. The super complication is uh, not a wristwatch, it's a pocket watch. Okay, fine, so the most expensive wristwatch before the Grandmaster Chime was the Paul Newman Daytona that actually belonged to Mr. Paul Newman, sold for 17 million. It's interesting how the most expensive watch before yesterday was held by a watch from 1920 and finally broken by a modern piece. The bidding of this piece was crazy. Um, The auction price was up 20 million in no time. Um, The bidders knew what they were coming for. Then it slowed down a bit. Everyone was in disbelief, but they were still engaged. It was a total bidding war. Nonetheless, no matter if the watch was sold for 31 million or I don't know, 106.3 million. The Grandmaster Chime totally deserves it. And hey, the bidders are donating to the research for for a good cause, so it's a win-win situation. Um, Before ending this episode, this is a fairly short episode because I just uh, want to dedicate this to talking about, um, you know, just a few watches from, from the fair. So it'll be uh, fairly short. So before ending this episode, there's another watch that caught my attention. This watch, um, this watch didn't break any record of sorts, nor was it sold at a crazy price. I am talking about the Breguet Type 20. Reasons why this watch is so amazing to me is because um, of the movement this watch holds. It is the vintage Valju movement. The Type 20 series has always been a vintage watch lover's favorite. Although I'm not really a vintage watch lover, but I'm still amazed by this. And the watch is more than a lot more than just a look. The Type 20 was built as a military model 
and the Type 20 up for sale in the auction carries a huge resemblance to the 50s military Type 20. Even the movement, that's why it's special, which is a vintage Valjoux 235. Modern day Type 20 watches usually consist of an um, automatic Breguet chronograph caliber and is visible through the case back. I'd be a, I'd love to be able to see um, the V235 movement through the case back on the Type 20. However, while I'm sure a lot of people would love to see that as well, not in the Type 20. The back, uh, I mean, not in this Type 20, the vintage one. The back is closed off from the world, and one reason being uh, it's to um, preserve the original design of an important vintage watch. That's uh, like a li little side note from 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 the from the charity auction, which is the Type 20, and I want to point that out because I love it. There are a lot of watches from the auction, and these were just some of my fa personal favorite uh, from Only Watch 2019. But I can assure you that every piece that was up for auction in the Only Watch event are equally special. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to the latest episode of the podcast. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe or follow button in front of you. I'm not sure if you're listening this on Spotify or Anchor, but either way, make sure you're following me on uh, every social media platform on Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Anchor, Spotify, everything. Just make sure you're following me. You'll get the latest news on articles, uploads, podcasts, new podcasts, new news, all kind of posts on watches and whiskeys. If you're not, you're missing out. So yeah, make sure you're following us. And until next Sunday, have a great week, guys. Stay safe. I'll see you guys.